Okay, so I gotta make sure this video is recording. Anyways, oh, okay, so the infinite paradox, rather, or rather, reality. Um, some people have stated that the universe is infinite, and some people have argued that it might be fint, meaning, like, there's a limitation on it. Now, I'm gonna prove to you, essentially, what the infinite paradox is, and why there's reasons to believe that it probably makes more sense everything's infinite rather than just fint. Okay, so, in an infinite universe, infinity refers to endless. You know, there's no end and everything's in motion. Now, that being said, you can pretty much imagine that everything's been done at least once. Or maybe not. You know, that's that's kind of a debate between certain people. Me, personally, I always was under the the idea that in an infinite universe, you know, anything is possible and maybe things have been done at least once, but at the same time, though, maybe there are still some things that we can still do ourselves. Like, for example, I can still set, like, high scores in, like, certain video games or beat games that maybe nobody else on this planet has known even existed, you know? But maybe in an infinite universe somewhere else, maybe we live in this exact situation and I've already accomplished. Heck, you could even say you're the richest man and... You know, you could be the richest man in the world or, you know, whatever fantasy you want to insert. But um, basically the idea is that, you know, in an infinite universe, everything, you know, the more possibilities, the better. That's essentially, you know, the idea is progression. That's really the idea behind it. And it's, you know, and it's really interesting to think because if everything is made of energy and everything doesn't get destroyed, it only clones itself somehow, and anything can be really made into something else, it really makes you wonder you know, how many possibilities are there really? And the fact that things don't have to have a limit. Like, I could keep adding stuff and saying, hey, there's another number. Like, you could have a bunch of scientists write a bunch of stuff down, a bunch of numbers mathematically, and I could say, oh, you could still add more numbers to that. And there, again, there doesn't have to be a limit. It can just keep going and going and going. You get the idea. But, and, and not only that, but it's like everything is made up of something else to the point where it's almost like even if you study like macro micro and macro biology for example where like micro means small macro means big you know you could essentially say that you know you don't necessarily know what's going to happen like beyond this planet like we could say that you know maybe it looks like there's nothing there but like maybe somewhere far away there is you know and then they came somewhere else and you know I mean, I believe that everything is infinite because there's just no proof that there's a beginning to something. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, you could make the argument that, and and, and again, I don't care what anyone says, you know, again, you, you can do this, like, factually. Like, this makes sense, you know. People argue they believe that there's a creator, and they say that, you know, you, you know, the, the God created everything. But it's like, you can say to those people, where did this God come from? And it could still make sense. You could say that maybe there's something before it. But then again, who knows? Again, I'm an agnostic. I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe what we believe is true unless it is factual. But again, you know, yeah, there could be something out there. But at the same time, though, it ain't going to be what we think it is. Or, or better yet. There's an, it, it could be more than we think there is because, again, what do we know compared to, like, everything else, right? You know? And you're talking to a guy that's very optimistic. I mean, I like to learn new things and try to remember all that information and in many different possibilities to the point where even it makes my head spin. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, if it's anything I've learned, it's that, you know, the universe really is just that. Life is pretty much just that you know everything's made of energy everything's always it's progression you know it's always changing the stuff you know there could be a plant there could be a galaxy right now that just gets destroyed by a supernova you wouldn't even see it but it's like maybe it's energy goes somewhere else and it turns into something else yeah it sucks that whatever destroyed it in the process and that you know whatever that's all about but it's like maybe it just goes somewhere else and turns into something else you know nobody would know because we're not there to see it, so we wouldn't know, like, how to really interpret that 100%. And so, you know, maybe, in a way, as crazy as this might sound, technically, maybe we're already immortal. You know, I'm not talking about some crazy afterlife, you know, that people have preached about in religion, but I'm talking about just, like, you know, as far as the universe goes, where, like, we could say that, you know, because we're made of energy, because, you know... We could die. Maybe there's something else in our bodies that departs. Again, like what people would refer to as a soul. And it just goes to like another dimension or 
we just keep existing somehow with our memories intact or maybe wiped you know again like some sort of a world of infinite reincarnation because here's what's really interesting and the reason i bring this up is because think of it like this there have been scientists out there that have gone on record by saying that they believe that our bodies are made up of unknown bacteria viruses parasites um genetics that could have been from an unknown source that became came beyond the clouds or beyond the the universe you know infinite evolution rather we call it planetary evolution or we could refer to it as just evolution you know things just change over time kind of like the same reason why like you know like how a nuclear fusion and a fission works where like everything's always like moving around bouncing off stuff and it's changing stuff and it's uh, always chemically combining and rejecting itself and it turns into other you get like all these ions all these different subatomic particles and formulas again if you're if you're a chemist you, you can kind of see where i'm coming from with this um or a physicist as well you know people who deal essentially scientists who deal with a lot of elemental um formulas you know you you, you can kind of see where i'm coming from with this but i always thought it was amusing how you know that that's true though you know, when you start, like, mixing things together, you start getting different results. Not only that, but it's, like, you can take, like, all these elements, not, not in just their basic forms, but, like, how many different kinds of elements there are and, and just really, like, you know, get different, you know, again, exchange, like, alchemy. You know, you could take something, turn it into something else, and you get different results. But it's, like, you know, as far as humanity goes, you know, or living organisms, let's put it that way, you know, you could essentially say that, you know, because our ba our bodies are not just made of human DNA genetics. Okay, I'm not talking about crazy conspiracy theories, but I'm talking about stuff that actually makes sense in a way. You know, rationality, you know. So let's just say that, you know, you look, you try to break down the genetics of what humanity is made of. I, I think the study of it is anatomy, if I remember, remember correctly. Um, or maybe biology and study of plants. You know, plants have genetics too. Actually, I, I think both would work in this case, what I'm about to say. But any living organism, when you try to break down its genetic coding, its physical appearance, you will come to the realization that there's more stuff in its body. So, in other words, that material could have came from somewhere else. Maybe not even from this planet. As a matter of fact, and this is what scares me, Sort of. Like, or I find it fascinating, but it's also really interesting to think about because I've never heard anybody say this. Our genetics could have been from other dead species that could have existed for many years ago. Uh, think of it like this, okay? Let's say that, you know, take like your deceased relatives. They could have died. Their body goes into the ground and rots, sure. But like over time, where does that energy go? It goes back into the earth. But like maybe over time, it might find its way back into the universe. And okay, maybe it's not going to be like 20 minutes from now or whatever. But like over time, you know, when that stuff goes back into the universe, it still exists. Because again, it turns into different... I mean, so in other words, your genetics could technically cause an infinite realm of possibilities of evolution for something else when it mixes with something else over time wherever it ends up so what i'm saying is that it's very possible that our genetics because there's so much unknown bacteria why is it just why is that it could have been from somewhere else that could have been dead from a long time ago and that's hence that's what causes an infinite evolution like you know because again you got different forms of evolution again you got like planetary evolution you got like you know you could have stuff like again like going back to like nuclear fusions and nuclear fissions how everything's always like combining and separating it's it's just remarkable like because everything's in motion everything's changing like over you give it like a long period of time and it seems like the universe could just it could be as infinite as you want it to be or you know as long as you want it to be and things just eventually happen the way they do and it's just remarkable how like you know we could go from like being like these single-minded organisms every time i say that it kind of reminds me of metroid fusion with the x parasites if you're kind of familiar with that basically the idea was that you know even though it was a video game series talked about how like they were like these single-minded organisms 
and how they managed to like absorb like the knowledge of like everything they came in contact with and they were able to like replicate like some of the strongest enemies like samus iran which is the main character you play as was able to come across and that was pretty much one of the main premises of like what made metroid fusion like so freaking scary it's actually really remarkable if you've if you never played it and you're into video games you should totally check it out it's a really great science fiction that was made by uh um nintendo and if and while you're hey while you're at it play the rest of the metroid series i got some really good uh scary moments in them something that really makes you think about stuff it really does and um but anyways but as far as infinity goes you know this is just one of the many possibilities or rather you know this is about one of the many legends that the people speak of one of the many stories you know talks about how like there's an infinite realm of possibilities but here's just one story you know but anyways it, it's raining outside too so if you hear raindrops drizzling on the, the windshield or the the shingles upside up, upstairs or you know what it is even though i'm on the second floor but anyways but what i'm saying though is if you think about it it's like there, there was a quote by uh i'm trying to think who said it where they say that you know life is stranger than science fiction i think it was carl i can't even remember his last name he was a fictional character was written by somebody else but essentially that was his like author name or something like that carl uh same guy that wrote uh or no, Mark Twain, Mark Twain, not, not, not Carl, Mark Twain was his name, where essentially he stated that it's, it's easier to fool people than it is to convince them they've been fooled, because people just don't think about stuff, and that's, and that's another, that's another true nature of humanity, or rather of the universe, you know, you can only go so far before you have to really think about stuff, you know, the answers don't just come falling out of the sky for the most part, you have to literally, you have to come to the realization that there's other possibilities out there, you gotta think about it, and then you gotta find a way to do it, and, and again, this, this sounds familiar, but I'll throw it out there too, because I really like this growing up as a kid, it's like, if you ever remember that one quote from G.I. Joe, flip from G.I. Joe, where you'd always say, and knowing is half the battle, and, and that's what and that's what that means, you know. You have to think about stuff, and then you gotta motivate yourself to keep up with it, and then and then to memorize it. And then with that being said, because like again, knowing is half the battle, and motivation is the other half. So if you can know and do it, then you can do anything. You can you can realistically imagine yourself being able to accomplish anything. That's how I look at. It. And so that so. Knowing 50% and doing 50% equals 100% progression. Rather. That's how that should be viewed. And so when we look at the universe, you know, some people don't, like, we look at the universe and we think it, it all means nothing. But what's really interesting, though, is there have been, you know, depending on who you ask, rather, like, there have been quantum physicists that state that even in the world of nothing, it's still something. It, it kind of, like, going back to the episode Seinfeld, if you remember Seinfeld, and they mention how, like, let's take, like, George Costanza and, you know, Jerry Seinfeld himself when he was on NBC and all that. And they they say, we got an idea of a show. but And, and they're saying, great, what, what's it about? And he says, nothing happens. It's a show about nothing. And he says, well, he's like, if it's a show about nothing, he's like, well, surely it's got to be something because something's got to happen. And that's the argument they were essentially making was like, nope, nothing happens. It's just a show about nothing. What are we going to do about this Elaine character? But it's... um you know that that's another reason why you know like if you were to look at the the universe as infinite or even beyond that you know there could be an infinite number of possibilities in an infinite number of ways so it would be like beyond infinity times beyond infinity equals beyond infinity to the second power <laughs> but it's um you see the contradiction there you know infinity never ends but it's like that's just what life is there really is no limitation to it. I mean, we might think we live and die and that's it. But maybe we're mistaken. Maybe maybe it really does go on and on and on. And it's always been that way. No beginning, no end. Just this illusion that there really is. Because our motivation, our... Well, maybe motivation might seem more like an insult. But, but our, our knowledge our superiority over like how big versus like the universe is versus like what we know is just limited. So we, that's really all we could imagine. You know, maybe, you know, you, you see your relatives die and you never see them again, 
but like maybe somewhere out there they are out there still but just not what you know not like any of the religions propose you know and some people would say well where's the you know what makes you say that you know because again you think about like all the possibilities that are beyond this planet you know like like there's there was a quote where they say that you know the truth is out there and they're usually referring to aliens and you know higher ups and but it's like rationally speaking we don't know what's out there we don't know and, and even if we could somehow see it we couldn't make sense of it because we don't know see what i always wanted to know was this if there really are creators why don't they tell us they exist you know some people state that it's all just a test and you know that that's a good argument that that, that definitely would make sense in regards maybe at the same time you know what they're testing us for what they're you know maybe maybe it's not what we think it is you know but then again you know who they are specifically we would definitely be wrong about because we don't know who these people are you know so like again you, you hear like all these people argue about like all these different religions and you know you've been you could see like atheists say well you could easily dismiss all these religions because they can't prove specifically that this religion is true and, I, and again i'm an agnostic and i agree with that I agree 100% with that because that is true. You know, if you're going to make the claim for something, wouldn't it make more sense that if you did know, you would be able to prove it? Unless you could say up until a certain point. Because again, you know, you got all these people that they'll make all these arguments for these religions, but at the same time, though, they contradict themselves to the point where it's like, you know, it's, it might not be true or maybe it isn't true because there's just that you know there's just not as much information as they might think there is you know again you know i take like people that have said that you know maybe jesus christ existed you know and there have been a lot of people that have debated this you know but then you have people that say that there is no historical evidence or if there was historical evidence it's not going to be any of the you know it's not going to be like in favor of christianity because like again you got people that have stole you know because again when i was a kid growing up i used to think that it wasn't true either. I, I, I mean, I thought to myself, I was like, you know, I might not have all the answers in the world, but I used to tell myself, say, hey, you know, maybe humans just don't realize this stuff. Because again, you know, my parents used to tell me that, you know, some people just never grow up. My dad used to tell me this all the time. You know, you could have people age their whole life and maybe they still believe everything they believe as a kid because maybe they never maybe challenged that at some point down the line that say, hey, you know what? Maybe all this isn't true. Because we live in a world where everybody's trying to control other people for their own political gain. Whether politics, money, you know, it's it's a business. It's a realm, you know. it's People try to get what they want. You know, it's the true nature of all. If, uh, if you want a really good example of that, uh, go on YouTube and type in uh, Valkyrie Profile, a good song. It's called The True Nature of All. It's uh, the final boss theme of uh, Loki. And it just, the, the theme song behind it really makes you think about, like, how a god of mischief could be. <laughs> but it's, um, it's interesting, though. It's interesting um, to think that humanity really, we really let people get away with this shit. Because people just don't care. But you have to care. You know, again, going back to what Flint from G.I. Joe always used to say, you know, it's better to tell the truth even when you think it might not be. Because again, you know, if there's a problem, you got to fix it. But you have to take responsibility for it because that problem ain't going to solve itself. You know, you have to, you have to, you can't be afraid to try new things. You won't know unless you try. That's a good point to make. And you have to, you got to help people out. You got to love people. You got to, you know, but at the same time, though, we're not the only human beings on this planet. We got to work together. We got to help people out. We, you know, we can't, we can't just pretend to be evil. We can't do this because this doesn't work. And then pretend like why everybody's against us later on. Okay, there's just, it's just that logic does not work. We've already seen it happen from time to time. And humanity needs to get out of that phase. We need to think about other people. If we run into a problem, we should find a way to fix it. It's always been that way. But we should act on it. And I think, and I believe... And, and here's another thing that I want to throw out there. If, if there are creators out there, if there are, if the universe really does have, like, some meaning behind it, then something happened to it. Like, if, if there is, like, some sort of a creator, then that's why the universe, you know, happened the way it did. Because it would have had, there would have been all this effort put into it. Somebody would have had this vision. Something would have had this vision that 
it wanted to create all these possibilities somehow and it would have took all this time and effort however long that might have been and it's like you know it wouldn't have believed in itself if it would have had those ideas if it wouldn't have tried you know and that's true you know infinite progression comes from never giving up and putting the time and effort into something if you limit yourself well you know you could always resume it when you want sure but you know but if you keep going you'll eventually finish it faster than somebody who gave, you know decided to take a break so the way i look at life you know even if it seems like humanity is really nowhere near as big as the universe is you know we're still part of it we still do things that we can help each other out and you know that's where you really draw the line you know you know on this planet it does matter because we're here and you know whether it's our planet or not you know let's i mean if you want to argue that maybe something was here before us and maybe left there who knows but the idea is that you know we live here and this is what we got to take care of so again you got scientists out there that are smart and you know i mean even stephen hawking's before he passed away was a fucking genius when he said that you know people need to take responsibility if people don't take responsibility, then the world is going to struggle. I mean, he, he didn't say it like words like that, but I mean, but that's what he originally got at with his life. You know, he started talking about how he wanted people to take him seriously. And, you know, he told people like the situations he was in and, you know, and, you know, he, he didn't let that slow him down. You know, he was a guy that was, he was paralyzed. If I, what was it, was it specifically he was paralyzed in a, you know, he couldn't move. You know, and some people made fun of him because of that. But, you know, but did, did that stop him from doing good things? No. You know, he found a way to overcome that stuff. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, just because people get limited on something, they have this strong will out of nowhere that just causes them to want to keep on going. Try even harder because now they're limited somehow, you know, and it's interesting. It's interesting to think that, you know, you could have, like, a good person still do good things for people, no matter what the situation is. So, again, I believe the universe is infinite, and the paradox of it, it's not really a paradox if you think about it. Because, again, everything just keeps going on and on and on, and no matter which way you look at it, it's it just seems like there's no end to it. We might think there's an end for our life, but maybe there's something else immediately waiting to begin at the end of it. And it just keeps going on from there. But anyways, okay, comment, rate, subscribe, favorite, share this video if you guys agree with this. You know, tell me what you guys think. But, you know what they say, in an infinite universe, you know, this is just one of the many stories that people speak of.